Hi, everyone. Um, quick question for the audience. How many of you have ever run a Node.js application? All others, probably is not the right conference for you. <laughs> so the question that I get the most whenever I, um, from uh, developers, is, uh, you know, developers write me all the time and, ask, and tell me, my application is crashing. Happens at least once a week. And they, um, I, I typically go and I ask, why? He says, oh, it has a memory leak. 100% certain it has a memory leak. And typically, it's one, is on one of my libraries for whatever reason. Um, and then I go ahead and keep asking, but, uh, you know, it's, do you get an out-of-memory error? Does it crash badly? Oh, no, absolutely not. It reaches a certain level of memory consumption, and then we kill it. So it's not crashing. If you stop killing it, you, it probably won't crash anymore. Okay, but let's explain why. Because why this is happening, it's the reason of this talk, and we are going to talk a little bit about that. Before we go in with that, with all that, though, I wanted to, whoop, sorry, okay. Um, I wanted to talk about what is a memory leak, okay. A memory leak is uh, a situation in which memory that is no longer needed is not being released. And typically because, you know, the user cannot even access it anymore and it stays lingering somewhere for whatever reason. This is actually hard. These are usually very hard to track. If you want a real one, this is a real world memory leak in Undici Fetch, Node Fetch, okay? Uh, the Node Fetch implementation, um, it's uh, uh, happened. It took a few months for, to track it down, one hour to fix. Um, to, clear, to be clear, this is usually very hard and usually very elusive. So anyway, this was a real world memory leak. But what is memory? Well. Let's go back to von Neumann architecture. I don't know many of you studied this at school, but you know, probably. Um, so, a uh, long time ago, it was theorized that there is a central processing unit, aka your CPU, and which also has some, uh, talks to some memory and loads the data. However, your programs are, see what is called virtual memory, which is not physical memory. Uh, virtual memory is mapped on physical memory where things are available and can even be on disk, ouch, Windows 95 swap. Um, you know, somebody of you remember that. Anyway, um, so that's happening. Okay, that's memory. Um, so our process all allocates data all the time on memory, right? Well, very likely we don't have to talk to know about memory at all in JavaScript, right? The engine cleans up the memory for us, or does it? Okay, let's talk on that. We are going to talk about garbage collection, V8 edition. So the theory behind all garbage collector is all objects die young. That's the thing, okay? What you want, most of the time when you're doing a web app or whatever, all objects are created and, you know, you can, uh, creating an object, throw the object away, create an object, throw the object away. More or less, that's the cycle of a request on, the, on your application. Which means that, uh, you know, we can just uh, um, clean them up very quickly. So, uh, in V8, uh, and a lot of other systems, but that's a different topic, okay? You have something called new space, where all the new objects are created, old nursery or other things, you can go to different names, probably, and something called old space, when you store all the objects that are keeping becoming old and dusty. Now, the new space, in new space, we use the, they use a garbage collector called scavenge. And in old space, we have a much slower garbage collector called mark and sweep that goes around and clean it up the old storage. So how does this work? Well, we have a new space is divided into two halves, one and they, with two labels. One is called from space, the other one is called to space. One is always empty. In from space, the objects are allocated. Now, once that space is full, we cannot allocate any more data, uh, what happens is that some objects, the objects are moved, the, the surviving objects, okay, that uh, are still being used, are, are moved into the, other, into the other half, and then we swap. In this way, we can clean it up the space very quickly. And then the new object goes into the new from space and, and continues. Once that's finished, the uh, object that survives, okay, 
Well, they need to go updated into old space, right? We talk about that. Um, those objects are, um, uh, are being, the objects surviving will be moved to old space. How does it work? Well, it works very, uh, in, in a very simple way. The objects, so the surviving object of the, the surviving two times, the garbage collection, are moved into old space. And the fresher, the still younger objects are moved into the other half. In the end, it ends up in something like this uh, in practice. And this happens all over, over and over again. But now we have objects in old space. They, they are getting dusty, right? Getting old. Um, well, what is happen when old space is full? I have no more memory. Well, first of all, it, the V8 has something called mark, pass through, says all of these, oh, this is not used, this is not used, this is not used. Then it marks them as empty, those, those parts as empty. And in the end, it shrinks the memory. All of these happens on a worker thread, on, on a thread, on a different thread, it's all parallel. You don't see it happening, but it happens uh, all the time while we run our own application. So whenever it's, so what hap what's happening in this way, it's only when compact happens that our Node app or our JavaScript application actually reduce the memory consumed. Before that, we still, all, of, all the memory that it has allocated is still available. This is a problem, okay? And this is the problem why, you know, you see it's Node.js memory keep growing forever, more or less. Um, so, well, these process look a lot like defragging in Windows 95. Um, so, so the point is that very often the memory is not even released. And you keep continuing using a very high re RSS uh, residence size set. Um, in, uh, in, in my system. Why that? Well, because all of this has happened before and it will happen again. Like, if it thinks that it's going to allocate more data, it's not releasing the memory to the operating system, it's just keeping it around because it will happen again. And uh, um, so, you know, support for, from, Peter Par, for, from Peter Pan, but also Battlestar Galactica. So I don't know if we have younger generation. Uh, anyway, um, so, What's most important when monitoring Node.js application is to look at the heap use total ratio as well as a RSS. RSS tells us you know, V8 has taken this, block of mem this blob of memory. Heap used and total will tell us how much is actually being used in my app. It can have taken a good chunk of data for, for memory, but in reality it's only a tiny bit. But how does it matter? Well, first of all, First thing that you need to take into account from this uh, conversation, don't kill Node.js if it reaches 80% of available memory. It's 100% normal, okay? It doesn't mean you have a memory leak. It will take all the memory that it can, so don't kill it, okay? So the first one. Now, but also, how is it practical? Well, let's take a look, let's take a look at the request response pattern of each web application that you are building. You receive, the, your app receives a request, it does some synchronous processing, typically passes the header, parse the body, do some, I don't know, magic, 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 create a SQL query, send the SQL query to your database. Um, I like Postgres, but if you like my SQL, we are still friends, okay? Um, then it gets a response, does some synchronous processing, might be some React server-side rendering, which is very, very, you know, easy to do, and then it gets a response out. This is good. So, what we want, based on what we talked about, if we, in order to maintain the memory consumption as, low, as small as possible, you, all of these needs to be collected by scavenge. Good? Makes sense? Otherwise, it will go into old space and eventually it will be collected in the future. Right? It, it will happen. Maybe. So, but in Node, we don't just get one request at a time. In fact, we get multiple requests at a time. And this is where it gets tricky, because we, oh, we need to make sure that at any given time, all the requests that are coming in are being collected in the young generations, and nothing is updated, upgraded to, um, Mark and Sweep, to, to old space and collected by Mark and Sweep. Otherwise, we'll see our memory go through the roof. So, ha, huh, it's a problem. How do we do that? Well, um, Problem being is the more a request allocates, the, there is the likelihood that uh, some data will spill out into all spaces higher. And this is true um, 
uh, also for a lot of things that you use every day. So a lot of things allocate a lot of objects and so on and so forth. For example, React server-side rendering. Um, now, all of these makes the overall memory consumption node grow, and it's okay. Now, how do we configure the memory size? One of the trick that you can, that this is the second thing that you can take out of this talk. You can configure the memory space size of Node.js. These are things that you should be tuning when you do your Node app. When you deploy your Node application in production, you want to be tuning those values. Why? They have an important, you can get some good different results. So one that is more important is you can tweak the max, you can change the max old space size, you can change the max zip size, you can change the max semi space size, which is the younger generation size. Now, there was one change that uh, brought me to do this talk here. And that change happened in uh, between node uh, uh, 20 and node 22. There was a slight change, and that made, uh, that, that happened. And uh, the V8 changed how it was computing the maximum size of the uh, semi space. And in uh, node 22 going forward, it, uh, it computes it on, based on the amount of memory available. This is tricky because if there is a system with, if you only give 500 megabytes of memory to your container or to your Node.js process, what will happen is that you will allocate one megabyte for the young generation. This doesn't work well, okay? You really want to increase this value depending on your application to get the, a good performance out of your system. Now, talking about React server-side rendering, well, typically when you do React, React server-side rendering of something, it allocates between 5 to 20 megabytes. It's a lot of objects, okay? Every div that you create is an object in memory for most uh, systems. So it's a lot of memory, okay? Now you have concurrent requests, multiple concurrent requests coming at any given time, so you need to run a simple multiplication here. And you see how much memory this is going to allocate at any given time. Okay, so memory consumption in practice. How does this matter? Um, so I'm going to use, I'm going to do a quick demo in, in a moment. I'm going to use something we built called VAT. It's a Node.js application server. You can use it to run multiple Node.js applications inside the same uh, uh, node process uh, using multi-threading. Um, it supports Node.js, Fastify, basic Node.js, Fastify, Express, Next.js, Axtro, Remix, Remix Vite, whatever you want. Uh, but the key part here is that because it's multi-threaded, we can keep uh, all the monitoring from in the main thread itself. And uh, so essentially there is a watcher for your app that can extract those information. So, uh, and I'm going to use something new that we are launching today called VATADMIN. So uh, let me show you uh, very quickly and may the demo gods be with me. Um, so here we go, okay. So here we are, uh, I'm going to start my app, okay? And here, this is a small app built on top of, um, here we go, you can see this is, we have a next node and Fastify system. This is a server-side rendering next app, here we go. Uh, these are value come getting from two fetches from a node app and a Fastify app. Okay, this is running. Uh, now we are going to do, to start VAT admin. Okay, and this is starting, okay, and this, this is connecting to that other app so we can get the data. And now you can see that we have the memory, we can see the heap size, we can see the CPU and ELU latency, and, and so on. Cool, so we have some information and we can monitor how our next application is doing. Okay, and we can see that right now it has a new space of 1.74 megabytes, okay? And all space is actually quite tiny, 20, 29 megabytes. So now I can actually run my auto cannon to uh, bombard my system and I'm doing benchmarks live on stage, what can go wrong. In, during my pre previous uh, rehearsal, this went super wrong. So let's put it in that way. So uh, what hap what's happening here, you can see that the, the new space is very tiny, okay, it's growing a little bit because the system has a lot of memory, but it's growing very tiny and uh, it's, it, it has a lot of um, 
uh, fluctuation. There is some latency here. You can see that the CPU and ELU are, are, are off the chart. And here are the numbers and the results, okay? Now, what we can do is we, with VAT, we can change this easily. So we can copy this, the VAT dot. Uh, we set it to uh, the two halves of 64 megabytes each. And here we go. Then we start this again. Oh, I need to do this first. Okay, and yeah, NPM start. Here we go. We start this again. And we start to run the same test. Okay. Whoop. Okay. Here we go. And now we are running it again. And you see that the overall memory consumption of the process has grown. Okay. Um, and now the new space is actually growing a lot. Okay. This is because we can collect, it can allocate more data there. It has less data being upgraded and moved to old space at any given time, okay? And it has a much more healthier collection cycle, which seems pretty good, okay? And now it has finished, okay? So uh, you don't see this properly because it's very big, but here is the previous result. We, we had a, uh, uh, um, 106 milliseconds of P99 latency, and by increasing the, the garbage collection time, we actually reduced the latency, more or less by a little bit 8%, something like that. Almost 10, almost 10 percent, which seems great. By the way, you change the configuration line and you get 10 percent latency. Seems free. Okay. Uh, we also got more or less 10 percent more throughput out of it, so which is very, very good. Now I also have all these results in my slides. Okay. So you can see all the data coming through. Uh, you can see these in. You can see this here at the top. This is the collection cycle, and you see it as this long cycle happening with. Um, uh, uh, without any settings, okay? But then when we turn it on, when you increase the size, now we can have a much, much thinner um, curve, which is typically healthier for, for your app. So uh, all of this to say you can, uh, you know, do a, do a very nice trade. You can trade some memory, okay, for some uh, compute, which is usually a very good trade-off for you. So you can go and take it away and change this setting, and you get some, some nice performance out of it, which I think is, is, is a good one. Um, so before we finish, I have two gifts for you. If you are into running Node.js in production, and probably a lot of you are, um, tomorrow I, have, I will be at the Sanofi Auditorium uh, for this event. And if you want to come, they are all welcome. OK, it's free, so you can just scan it if you want, if you are interested, or just ping me on my social. Uh, but also. We are, uh, I'm releasing a book today, and uh, the definitive guide for Node.js in the enterprise. So uh, if you want to have, um, if you want to discover how to run well Node in the enterprise, probably it's a good book. It's almost 296 pages, including re recipes for doing Kubernetes, auto-scaling, uh, monitoring, uh, all things from uh, Node Express to uh, Fastify, of course and uh, uh, even Next.js uh, on-prem, which is a fun one, as everybody would say. So um, having said all of that, I think I am uh, on time. And uh, uh, thank you. Probably keep the slide up so that I can copy it. But thank you very much, guys.